Lucy Thomas and the wind beneath my wings, and that was a Bette Midler song. Oh my gosh, I I hate to say, I hate to say it, but I think she did it better. <laughs> <laughs> and he said it. <laughs> no, she's fabulous. David O'Neill. Oh, Gary. Welcome to Monterey on tonight. Oh, what a pleasure to be here. And so this honored. guy is going to be, in my opinion, a city councilman come election day in Carmel. And he is a dedicated and service-minded individual committed to preserving the unique charm of Carmel by the sea. Hmm. I mean, it's world renowned. It is. You know, so when we were in France and we were remodeling the chateau, we were trying to help the people in this small village that was adjacent bring life back into it. And so we were showing them the example of Carmel by the Sea, and they said, oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood's place. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody so. knows. But they know it's charming and special. And we said the reason why is because they've been so careful about yeah. their development over the decades. Over the years. Yeah. No McDonald's. No, <laughs> no. And no. only only Tiffany's. Tiffany's is worth having a big store. You can have, yeah, Tiffany's. <laughs> Carmel, California, USA has a Tiffany's. What's that tell you? <laughs> they knew where to come. That's right. They did. David and I have made acquaintances a couple of, uh, probably three or four times now since I met you. Mm. I was invited over to his home and um, JJ is the guy that made the connection. Uh, Jacques and uh, Ali uh, McDaniel uh, said, you got to meet David. So I was invited to a little, was that a kind of a little morning breakfast kind of thing you guys had? Yeah, it was a get to know you sort of thing. And uh, and I love JJ because, you know, he's originally from France. So we get to speak a little French together, which oh, is a wow. lot of fun. Yeah, I didn't know that. Didn't know you spoke French. Oh, it's just some poo. <laughs> so... Um, gotten to know David and uh, just a wonderful young man and I use that word because you are a young man but, <laughs> for a little while longer maybe <laughs> but uh, he is uh, he's ready and I'll tell you he did something I just thought was so great he had a little reception for a few of his friends over at the Cypress Inn if you guys have never been here to Carmel to the Cypress Inn that was the hotel that uh, Denny and uh, Dor uh, Doris Day, I almost mm -hmm. slipped my mind, Doris Day. <laughs> It's a dog-friendly hotel. I think it's one of the few, isn't it? Well, and it was sort of the the reason why the whole rest of the town became so dog-friendly. And and it's part of the reason we're so well-known in the world, though, this whole community, is that it's a dog-friendly place. And honestly, that was one of the reasons I loved about coming here, too, and was drawn when we came back from uh, France, is because we could take our dog everywhere Fabulous. and feel welcome. Yeah, and, and, and of course... I go on Saturday nights to the Cypress Inn because of Debbie Davis, mm. who is a fabulous singer, vocalist, and Gennady, who is the pianist from the Mission Ranches, her accompanist, accompanist on Saturday nights. And so Debbie performs, and I love Debbie and her music. And uh, he took over the living room where Debbie performs for a little get-together, and that just turned out fabulous. Well, and it, what was really an honor is that it was gifted to us. You know, uh, Denny Levette and his lovely wife um, offered us to have an event there, and he uh, introduced me, yes. and that was totally impromptu. That, I was not that expecting that. That was such a nice gesture. Oh, my gosh, it really touched my heart. Because yeah. you know what it says to me is that he's one of the people that has helped sculpt Carmel by the Sea yes. over the years, and he sees that... I love it the way that well, he yeah. loves it, and yeah. that I want to carry on what he's done into the future. You know, future generations have got to enjoy this, and we have to find ways to protect it, even though we're developing things uh, in the city uh, according to the state plans. You've got a career in construction, real estate planning, marketing. You've refined your skills and diligence, listening and communication. Critical traits for him to be a city councilman, and I know that... Uh, when he is a city councilman, he's going to be doing great things for Carmel. Well, you know what? I love Carmel very, very much. 
and you know the nature and the charm of it but what i really love are the people yeah the people of carmel i have never lived someplace that i felt so welcomed and appreciated and uh, included in things i you know even when i lived in san francisco you know in my early 20s and i was having a chance to to live around people that weren't judging me for being gay um this feels even more inclusive and well, loving than that felt. Absolutely. Uh, such a wonderful community. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people today to, to volunteer for public service, because that's what this is doing. He ain't doing it for the money, I can tell you <laughs> that. He's doing it because he has a passion for Carmel. He wants to see Carmel. I think you've got a swarm spot in your heart for that city and i could see it and you're going to be a, a great asset to the community david well i'd really love the chance to serve in this way because so many people that i know and respect have asked me to do it yeah they, they believe that this is what the city needs somebody who's going to do it with heart and yeah. compassion and dedication and do it full time working very hard at it i'm i'm so lucky i well i'm i'm graced honestly that i have a husband that's been so loving and wonderful and successful that i can have the opportunity to serve the community full time absolutely and a shout out to william yes william my i love. hope he's watching <laughs> he better be <laughs> <laughs> anyway it, it 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 warms my heart really to have uh, a guy like david uh number one on the show and uh Happy to give him the recognition that he rightfully deserves because uh, he's going to do a great job for that community. And there's a lot of things going on. You know, I had um, the current mayor, Dave Potter, on the show a few shows back. And we talked about the things that are happening in Carmel, like street addresses. <laughs> and the fact that people want to change a hundred some year old law, I guess, or ordinance to give all of the homes now with a street address. So I understand they're going to put that up for ballot. Well, it's a little bit complicated. Is it? And, yeah. and there's some some people who are trying to fight on both sides of it. The, the issue is not that we're going to discuss this topic again, as far as I'm concerned. The issue is that they've been doing the procedures wrong. Uh -huh. uh, I heard that. Specifically, Karen Ferlito and Jeff Barron have been pushing through the procedures incorrectly to try and force this down our throats. Now, I'm, I'm not saying whether, you know, I'm one side or the other at this moment, I'll, I'll explain to you, but the issue to me is that we should never force people. And so when the idea of having a vote was brought up, Jeff Barron said, well, no, they might make the wrong choice. Uh-huh. Um, so that's democracy. Yeah. Um, you know, when you don't let people vote and you tell them what to do, that's autocracy. Or well, we other... want them to vote on it. Well, exactly. That's what has to be done. And it's that's why everybody's been so frustrated and upset is because it hasn't been handled properly. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are good points on both sides. I know. I, I've, I've heard both sides of the... Uh the uh, conversations about why Carmel needs to have street addresses on the homes. But, you know, hey, it's been working all these years the way it is. Yeah. And, I mean, how many people have missed a package or didn't get their medication or the ambulance couldn't find the house? Come on. Well, it is quite rare that those issues uh, come up. And there are workarounds for every yeah. um, issue. Yeah. And we've come up with a document that we have a coalition in town, uh, an informal group of people that belong to different um, boards and commissions and nonprofits and such, and try to um, communicate with each other and make sure that that we could support each other in things. Yeah. And so we've come up with a document that explains basically to anybody new or somebody who doesn't know, these are the ways to work around all these issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds really funny that we've got to, ha and it's not just one page. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's a long, long list. But, but, but it, you know, it, it, there are ways to work around it. Sure. And, and this, 
this um, tradition of not having addresses is something that makes this place really unique. And How many places that you know in a city where there's no street address? <laughs> I mean, they, they can, you can find, I found his home easily <laughs> by him telling me it was on this corner and this corner, Southwest, you know, it, you can find it. It's not impossible. When I went to the Carmel Foundation for the very first time, hmm. I found it. They gave me the cross street and the cross street, and there it was. So, uh, come on. Uh, I, well, you know which way I'm voting. Yeah, and but I, I don't get to vote because I'm not living there. You got to be in Carmel to be able to vote. <laughs> well, we'll find you a home. I can help you with that <laughs> <Okay>. too. <laughs> I want to be next door to you. I love oh. your home. Yeah, we're remodeling a 1924 right. home, bringing it back to um, its best possible. Um, That's the one you're working on now. Yeah. Uh, okay. it's When's that going to be on the market? About a, about a month or so. Oh, really? Yeah. Getting close, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's oh. so exciting. And we've, we've uh, really made it more luxurious inside than it would have been, you know, but we've kept the style and the essence of but it. But the one you're in now, I understand that when you found that home, you didn't have to do a thing. It was just like, move in. It was magic. And, but the funny thing is that we love to remodel homes. So. Well, <laughs> but no, the, I mean, we'd been through a lot, you know, coming back from France. And uh, there were some really crazy things that happened over there that, that made us uh, decide that we didn't want to continue uh, investing in France anymore because of government issues. And it's top-down government issues kind of stuff. So this, this stuff here in California is a little... Can we can we finish with talking about the pit? Yeah. Let's talk about that big pit in downtown Carmel. You know the history. Give them the history, the folks that don't know anything about the pit, and what's going on there now. Well, there's this big hole in the ground that's been there for a while, and I think we're going to turn it into a swimming pool. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, um, the people that were developing it halfway through – uh, lost financing or whatever it was, they're, financially they couldn't handle it to go forward, so they wanted to sell it. They were asked, uh, or they asked um, uh, Patrice Pastor if he would please consider doing the project. That was a community ask. This was some of the different associations and, and, uh, and the city council uh, in, indirectly asked him if he would do it and he said yes he'll do it so he bought the project and he started to take it over and then we started putting him through hell <laughs> and uh, amazing amazing the guy comes to the rescue with this big pit in downtown carmel and now they're giving him a hard time yeah. he's the guy that rescued rocky point mm -hmm. and gave it back to the community uh, he did I mean, a wonderful man from france yeah, and you know he he loves it here because this was the only place that his dad, you know, a very a very used to bring him here when he was a kid. Yeah, he was a stressed out man, but here in Carmel, he was happy, and happy. it was the only place he ever saw his dad. Look him up on the happy. internet, Patrice Pasteur. Hmm. Yeah, he's a really great guy. He really means well. All of the stuff that he's doing, he's developing with the uh, the essence of Carmel in yeah, mind. Yeah. He doesn't want to change anything. He wants to keep things nice. And honestly, the, there was an issue with um, this uh, little restaurant that he bought mm -hmm. that caught on fire. Yeah. And the reason why he decided not to help that lady anymore, he bought that. I was at the luncheon where we decided to ask him if he'd buy it just to keep her in there because she wow. couldn't afford the new rent. Wow. And he was going to keep it the old rent was because she went to the press, well, her son went to the press about an issue that they were having and they didn't they didn't go to him first. Uh, and so he felt betrayed. Yeah. yeah and I, so I can understand that. He decided to stop. But the good thing about the pit is that they're working very hard. It's gonna be something. Oh. And it's gonna fit into the community too. It's gonna be beautiful. And they're just working out some water credit things right now. But it's it's underway, you know. Yeah. I wish uh, we had a picture of it, Dylan. I don't know whether you can find it in the few minutes we have left. But look online. There might be something in the pine cone. 
uh, I, I, did they call it the pit? I know that was what <laughs> people people That's came. It. There it is. Oh, that is it. Yeah. That's it. Swimming pool. <laughs> it's a, a big, deep swimming pool there. They started construction. They ran out of money, and it's just been sitting there for how many years, David? Oh, gosh. Seven, Too eight many. years? Yeah. I mean, it was before I got here. It was uh, yeah. stopped. Very and, sad. Um, they, really, they're going to have a really beautiful on the corner, sort of a Spanish style. Yes. And then they're going to have the a Tudor style. And then a coastal style, and then for the people who like modern, they're even going to have a little modern oh, section beautiful. in the back. That's the way to do it. Yeah, so. yeah make everybody happy. Come on, <laughs> as best we can, <laughs> if that's possible. Yeah, while preserving, you know, the yeah. character of Carmel, and you know, in in our general plan, it says. 13 or 14 times that we need to respect the residential character of Carmel by the Sea. And it has its own special character. And I'll tell you something, folks. If you've never been to Carmel, those of you that are watching, you have to come to Carmel. If you do nothing else, just drive along Scenic Drive. Hmm. You don't have to do anything else. Just Scenic Drive and just take a look at that beautiful Carmel Beach. And the homes that are, oh, we got a little moth in here who came in to see us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they got me right there. Do that. Scenic Drive, when you come into town, drive along Scenic. There is nothing more beautiful anywhere in the world. It's such a, it's a magical place, really. And look at look at these homes. Look, and look at the shops. I mean, it, it's just, it's a magical place. And for the most part, except for when we have our storms, it yeah. is a really pleasant place to be almost all the time of the year. Yeah, we do get some pretty bad storms in here during the winter because we're right on the ocean. Mm -hmm. We get to play with Mother Nature. That's right. Yeah. She turns off the power when we... <laughs> she, wants, she wants us to relax. <laughs> if you're going to be here and you can afford it, get a generator. Mm, a quiet one, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A quiet one. Yeah. David, thank you so much for being here oh, tonight. Oh, Gary, thank you. Uh, it's such a there pleasure. There he is, oh. David O'Neill, City Council in Carmel, 2024, 2025. Um, and it's a two-year term, right? It's actually four years. Oh, is it four years? Two years for the um, mayor and four years for the city council Oh, members. I didn't know that. I, uh, two years for mayor, four years. For, so yeah. you're going to be around till 2029, huh? Yeah, oh, at least. You know, in one way or another, I'm going to be volunteering and supporting this community in one way or another. So That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank being you, here. Gary. Appreciate it very much. Such a pleasure. Okay, one more of my Lucy Thomas videos, and then we're going to turn it over to Dylan. So here's one more from Lucy Thomas.